I'm not sure if this video is going to work out, but um, I have a couple seams, a few seams that I'm not thrilled with. Um, they get a little bit wider on one side than the other. It's because the pieces don't line up quite right. And I, I'm trying to make the transition smooth so it's not really noticeable. And I found something that I've done here and seems to seems to be working. And again, I'm not sure how it's going to show. It'll, it'll be better once primer's on it. But basically, I had panel lines here where this ring uh, was shifted offset of this ring. And so it kind of sanded and kind of blended them together, but it kind of made a kind of a turn. And I was trying to think of how to smooth out the, the line to make it appear more straight, even though it is going to be an angle because this piece was, one of the rings was too far this way, one of the rings was too far that way. So it is an angle, but I'm trying to make it look as straight as I can instead of the extreme juxtaposition of this ring is here and then this ring is over like a layer shift and something I came up with that seems to be working okay I thought I'd show how I'm doing it um, and if it shows on camera that's great but I'm not sure it will uh, it basically involves using just a, a razor blade for like a box cutter knife um, a small screwdriver, flathead, and some glazing spot putty. And I gotta hold the camera so I'm not gonna be able to show the entire process as I do it, but hopefully you'll get the idea. This side over here of this gap came out really nice. And some gaps on the other side, the couple that I did, turned out pretty good. So basically what I'm doing is I'm putting the blade like this and if you can see, I think it might show in the picture, there is, there is a gap there. This wall, the seam is not straight in the gap, but this razor blade is straight and so both ends of it, the top and the bottom, are on different rings. Um, I think they're on different rings. Which is a good sign that I'm starting to blur where my rings are. So, anyway, what you've got, as I said, is this seam isn't perfectly straight. There's a gap in the middle where it gets a bit wider. And so what I'm doing is I'm holding this razor blade with one hand. It's pressing up against the wall of the seam, top and bottom, above where the section that's bowed out, I guess you could say, because it's it should be it should be um, a straight vertical line, but it's got kind of a a bow in it. So I'm holding the knife in there, angled a little bit backwards, this is a gross exaggeration, but holding a little bit backwards to make sure I can get a little bit more putty in there than I need. And then as I'm holding this with one hand, I then take the other hand and get just a dab of the glazing putty on the end of the screwdriver and I'm mushing it down like this up against that blade and into that gap. So basically I'm just using the screwdriver to squish the putty into this seam but rather than fill the entire seam and then try to carefully make the entire seam straight because it's almost there, there's, it's just a little bit off. 
I'm just trying to force putty into that area where it's bowed outwards. The gap is too big. And then once that's done, let it dry and then go back with 220 grit sandpaper and or um, a hobby knife, which I'll actually use the back side and not even the cutting side. The back side will have less chance of me um, cutting the plastic and, and going too far. So I'll just take what I have been doing. I haven't actually used the knife yet, but I'll take uh, 220 grit sandpaper, fold it in half, and just carefully run it up and down the seam, trying to get the extra because I'm holding the blade a little bit angled so it gets a little bit more putty in there than it needs. And also there's putty on the face because I'm smooshing it in there. So once it's dried, I'll sand the face smooth and then I'll take 220 grit, fold it in half, and very carefully go up and down, just trying to get that area straight that had a gap that was too wide. So I hope I hope that kind of explains what I'm doing. Basically, I'm using this as a guide making sure the top and bottom are, are where I want that line to be and then filling in the area that's too wide and this one here on this side like I said is is good and did that last night and it's fine this this line I'm perfectly happy with how um, vertical it is and it doesn't seem to be bulging out anymore it was a little bit both of these were a little bit wide but this one here on the left hand side needs a little bit more putty in it because it's this side looks to be pretty good but this side looks like it's still got a bit of a wider gap right in this area here so I hope that shows what I'm doing um, really close to being done with that kind of fiddly bit stuff and then it'll be sanding this and then painting which I'm actually really afraid of messing up but I, I really that's my goal is to get the painting done but now yeah I'm really worried that I, I'll mess up when I'm painting it um, but I guess the worst that can happen is that I'll have to sand paint off and repaint it I guess so having it all glued together and everything is is the big step and now that I notice I've got a little area here a tiny line right there while I'm putting the putty in there put a little bit there to get that little tiny area there with a little mark on it to go away and actually I don't know if it'll show right down here. I've also got a couple little tiny. I mean, how nitpicky am I going to be if I try to fix every little thing like that? But yeah, it's it's getting it's getting really close. And just hopefully when I paint it, everything goes well. All right, here's what it looks like after. So again, I'm holding, as you can see there, hopefully there's no gap in that seam. That seam is straight, so I'm holding it at an angle like that to get a little more putty in than I need over the area that is too wide on one side. And then once that putty is packed in, I hold it for just a few seconds, and then I kind of it towards the other seam and out. And there we have two seams. After that dries, again, I'll go over the top first 
and then before I get it all the way off the top when I get it down um, quite a bit but not so that it's down to the primer on the top then I'll come in with the 220 grit fold it in half and just slowly go up and down watching as I go trying to make that line as straight as possible so again on this one the right hand side line was fine the left hand side bowed out a bit so that's what I'm trying to correct here and then I noticed over here I also had on the left hand side it bowed out a little bit so I figured well I might as well try there so I'll try and remember to make another video after I've sanded it and then sprayed some primer on it and I didn't take a shot of it before I started messing with uh, with this seam although it would I think I showed it in one of my longer videos so if you wanted to look at it you might go back to I think it's a couple videos before this one or one video before this one where I show some of the seams and how they weren't perfect and you can get an idea of that would be the before and then like I said I'll, I'll film an after after this putty has had a chance to dry and I've sanded it down and, and see where I'm at. Alright, here's that area after sanding it down and primering and it looks pretty good. I mean I could work on these for forever trying to get them perfect but I'm, I'm worried now that I'm spending too much time on this for too little return and I need to get this thing to the point where I can paint it. So hopefully this shows that technique does work. Um, this is where the boundary is between ring 3 and ring 2 and I've got those seams pretty good especially considering where they started where as I said the the one ring was a bit in this section was a bit far over in one direction and it was a pretty jarring um, seam where you could obviously see where it wasn't straight where it was two pieces glued together whereas now it's it may not be perfect but it's more of just a seam that's not the exact same width that it is a seam that looks like it's obviously bent not not quite vertically straight so that technique does work um, whether it's better than filling the whole channel and then re redoing it um, with sandpaper or fine chisel or something I'm not sure um, one thing I did notice is that the filler material did kind of stick to the blade as I pulled it away so it didn't all get packed in where I wanted it to so if I had a seam that was bad enough I was going to do it again I would hold the blade further out so it's not flush up against the top and bottom I would get it where it's kind of like that and then I'd pull it away a bit just so I could get more material packed in and it would take a little bit more sanding to get it down level but the way I did it because it pulls some of the material away and off it means that it it takes twice as many attempts of doing it to get the material in there necessary uh, to really hide that seam so just to follow up or not a follow up because I'm gonna put all three of these videos together of the explanation the piece with the the glazing putty on it and this piece that after it's been sanded, primered, and then I did a little bit more work up here 
um, getting that a little bit better. Um, hopefully the light and the camera will show that it, it worked pretty well. I'm pretty happy with those seams, especially compared to how they started. Again, it's, it'd be one of the earlier videos, just after I glued all three rings together, where I think I probably showed that, especially this side, this seam, or these couple seams were fairly off. <laughs> 